All right, it's been a couple months. I got to dust off these hands here. Feature match review. <laughs> Heading into Age of Overlord, Rescue Ace is the deck to beat. But with thousands of duelists playing the deck, none of them can compare to Steven Santoli. Steven Santoli is coming off the back of a remote duel YCS win, followed up by sweeping the world's points playoffs and a top eight at the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship in 2023. He kept the doubters hating with a win at YCS Indianapolis, and at a minimum right now, he's top 16 here in Richmond. And he's facing off against a skilled opponent in his own right. Clifton Land has always maintained a good reputation in the community for pressing top cuts, so a definitely challenging opponent in the way of Santoli. So as we jump into our top 16 feature, game one opens up in a very fun fashion. Both players have opened extremely awkward hands, but to be honest, you'd rather be Clifton in this situation. Steven has a Rescue Ace Hydra, Enemy Controller, Infinite Impermanence, and two Ash Blossoms. Clifton's opening five is Nibiru, Infinite Impermanence, two Per Lilies, Per Leap, and a Pretty Memory. The problem with Steven's hand is he has literally one Rescue Ace card in his hand, the Hydrant, and that isn't even a full combo and he has to somehow put up a board, stop Clifton from overwhelming him with expertly noirs, or even just simply ending the game, and Clifton's hand, while awkward, is still much more playable than Steven's. So, let's duel. The Rescue Ace deck is good, but one Hydrant isn't full combo. Steven begins with Normal Summon Hydrant and quickly activates the effect. Clifton does not use Infinite Impermanence here because there are so many punishes. If he used Imperm and got away with it, better player, I guess. So the Hydrant is gonna pick up Preventer. Some people would even consider not even playing here and simply passing back to the opponent. The risk of a single hand trap or any amount of engine to break the board here of Santoli can simply just be devastating. However, Steven is the perfect technical player and he sees the line. So now that he's committed his Hydrant, he needs to somehow make a board and generate follow-up. So now with Preventer in the hand, he Link Summons Link Karibo and then summons the Preventer with the Hydrant now in the graveyard. Steven continues by Link Summoning again for everyone's favorite, SP Little Knight, and then is able to summon back the Hydrant with Preventer and just simply says go. This turn was not really about what Santoli did, but instead about what he didn't do. He kept both his infinite impermanence and enemy controller in the hand. Steven realizes that if he commits any cards from his hand of the field, there will simply be no way to get them back. He won't be able to control, ironically, how he can use them. The SP Little Knight on the field may look like some interruption, but instead it's Steven's own follow-up and a way to play around the pearly strategy, which loves attacking into your monsters to gain advantage. Santoli's about to give it nothing to swing at. This is because Steven's plan is to remove both monsters from his field so that his infinite impermanence, a trap card that people would normally set face down on the first turn, is still in the hand and will turn out to be exceptionally difficult to play around since it's hard to have on Clifton's radar. Now it's a far cry from what Rescue Ace boards typically look like, a full spell trap, monster zone, and hand, but Steven has the best possible setup and he finds it out on the fly in a top 16 feature match. You just have to play the cards you're dealt. Clifton leads off his turn with a pearly pretty memory and this is where Steven wastes no time tagging out his SP Little Knight and Hydrant for the rest of the turn. They're not on the field, but they'll make it back in the end phase to hope to contest the board of Clifton next turn. Pretty Memory summons a Pearly, which turns out to be a bit of a bad kitty as it misses its reveal three. Next up, Clifton normal summons Pearlily, and then is met with a surprise infinite impermanence from the hand. Everything is working out here for Steven. Clifton's remaining play is to either go for Sylvan Princess Sprite, attempt to hit a Pearly spell from the top of the deck, or simply go for a four material Zeus. Clifton chooses the right line as anything the Princess Sprite gets will be met with an Ash Blossom, if it even connects. So Clifton makes his four material Zeus, but critically, he sets his infinite impermanence to the back row, like we all would normally do. 
He simply passes turn versus SP Little Knight and Hydrant, which return in the end phase. Curiously though, in this end phase, Clifton doesn't use his Zeus effect to wipe the field. Of course, he has a set infinite impermanence. Why would he want to take away his own resource? And he's also potentially afraid of other follow-up cards in the Rescue Ace strategy that could be a Rescue Ace Turbulence lurking in the hand of Santoli. Well, here's why he needed to keep that impermanence in the hand. His Zeus is already being threatened by a second SP Little Knight in the extra deck of Steven. And so his own Zeus is going to make him lose his impermanence if he uses it during the end phase. It creates an awkward set of sequencing where he has to use the infinite impermanence before he uses his Zeus. And this lets Steven play around his board perfectly with the cards that he saved from his first turn. But of course, this is a misplay that takes a lot of foresight to avoid. And it's tough when your opponent is Steven Santoli playing perfectly with just a single Hydrant. Santoli draws his second Preventer and gets to his main phase. Delighted, he activates Hydrant's effect to search, which Clifton has to allow, as his infinite impermanence will simply be dodged by the effect of SP Little Knight. And now, Steven's discipline pays off. It's left, right, A, B. Enemy controller threatens the Zeus of Clifton, which he has to allow to take. Steven simply uses his new toys effect, wiping the field of all cards, including Clifton's set, Infinite Impermanence. Steven, now with Turbulence in the hand off the back of his Hydrant, and a newly drawn Preventer, he is able to unleash a full Rescue Ace combo. Turbulence effect resolves, and he stays underneath five summons like an absolute machine to assemble a full Rescue Ace board. Clifton top decks and says it's time to pack it up. Steven Santoli has just won game one with a perfect game and a single Hydrant. Unfortunately, the rest of the match is a little anticlimactic. In game two, Clifton opens a mega combo, and no amount of perfect play from Santoli can get him out of this situation. Funnily, game three pans out in a very similar way to the first. Steven opens one Hydrant, Little Knight Hydrant pass. The problem? Uh, Clifton bricked pretty badly. His sixth card doesn't offer anything. Steven is able to assemble a combo. His seventh, there isn't that. He even has a Lightning Storm in his hand, but nothing else to back it up. And Steven just refuses to play into Clifton's Nibiru. It's a simple win for the Santoli. He's off to top eight. So Santoli closes out his top 16. A duelist whose abilities were certainly doubted prior to his Indianapolis run. I mean, myself, when I saw his remote duel YCS list, it had two Dimension Shifter, two Dark Ruler No More, and two Forbidden Lands. But then, well, he took that to sweep everything, top eight the World Championship, and prove all the doubters wrong. Just takes a couple YCSs to do it. And now, Santoli is a consistent threat, showing his amazing technical play, at the highest levels. Excited to see more of Santoli in the future. But on that note, folks, peace.